I'll take that. <laughs> um, Thank you, Cahirlach, and thank you, Minister, and, and I suppose at the outset I do want to commend the great work that was done in the new primary care centre and bringing that to fruition in Castlebar. I think it's a fantastic centre. Um, I think it's 17 years late if we look back at the original primary care strategy and one of the pilot projects there were in Mayo, and they, as you know, were never never invested in and never developed in the way that they were envisaged to be. So 17 years later we have Castle Bar and we do welcome that. What does worry me a little bit is that when you go to some of these primary cares, you get all the good news. You know, you get all, and, and rightly so, and good practice, and I think it's very important to mainstream that good practice um, that would be mentioned to you in all of these visits, but people wouldn't tell you things necessarily in Mayo, like that there are hundreds of children waiting for physiotherapy, and, and people indeed right through the life cycle waiting for physiotherapy because we don't have nearly enough physiotherapists or occupational therapists. They are the positions when you have long-term illness, you have maternity, and all of those things, they aren't being... Uh, it isn't being addressed in a proper way, and sometimes it can be covered. And I think it speaks a bit maybe to the number of parliamentary questions that you're being asked. You know, that's been asked. I think that's a waste of resources that they have to be asked in the first place. But I think there are a lot of things being covered up uh, that should be there and be tra transparent um, uh, around it. But just talking on, I want to just concentrate a little bit on the HC program last night, and I think it does beg the question, you know, is it RTE that are responsible for running the health services and some of these things? And we do owe a debt to the likes of, of Una Smith and others bringing these um, things to the, the, the forefront um, on it. And um, I just, see, it's extremely worrying where 43,500 patients, public patients, are displaced because of what's happening within the system um, and private patients getting, uh, getting preference <coughs> over that, that they have lost out in the, in the last two years. And I want to ask you, as, uh, be, what's been lost out in terms of the contracts not being fulfilled, the 2008 uh, contracts? Have you done an estimation on the cost to the public system of that? So that's one question. Um, are, there, are there sanctions there to be implemented? And have these sanctions ever been implemented on the consultants' contracts? Are those who clearly broke their contracts? Because I think in any case, if we don't have sanctions, then you're not going to have a, a behaviour that we need inside of those contracts. So have any sanctions been, been... Were you surprised about last night's programme, or did you have all of that information uh, already? Um, why did the HSE stop compiling uh, the data, the compliance figures with the private practice limits within the public hospitals? Why did they do that? Did they ask you for permission to do that? Sometimes it's very difficult for people to know what the relationship is between the HSE and between yourself as Minister and, and the Department of Health and where the responsibility lies. Because it seems like that indeed that you have all the responsibility but they have all the authority in terms of, of, uh, of, of how things are, are implemented. So I think it's crucially important. Did you adver advertise the stopping of the compiling of, of data uh, in 2014? Then just going back to the, the strategy, I think it's a very good strategy. I think your way of, of uh, encompassing all political parties, albeit that there are limitations in it, is, is good and it would give me some confidence. But however, I have to look back to 2002 when Fianna Fáil were following uh, their 10-year uh, strategy at the, at the time. And that was, and the aim of it was to quote themselves to deliver high quality health care for all. And, but the distinction between the public and private was still going to remain under their strategy. But they did say that there would be greater equity for public patients and that would be sought in the revised contracts that would come about, come about in, in 2008. But you see, this strategy as in that strategy, which was an absolute and complete failure, no more than the vision for change that was never then supported and never implemented in the way that it should be. But this strategy will be judged by the, the, the hundreds of thousands of people waiting for appointments. 
and those waiting, as I said, for physiotherapy and occupational therapy uh, in Mayo, and those waiting months for counselling, which is hugely worrying. If a young person presents in Mayo for counselling today through the primary care counselling system, they can have to wait months and months and months. And I have experience of working with this all of the time uh, on the ground. And again, in terms of home help hours, and I welcome the extra allocation in the budget, but you know that was only to address some of the waiting list that was already there. And it's not home help care hours hours anymore. It's home health care minutes and that is wrong. So if you were to do some, you know, to underpin this strategy, if you were to do some immediate actions, even taking the home care, home, home care uh, minutes for, for instance, if you were to say nobody will get home care, um, it, 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 there will be a minimum uh, time of an hour, it would solve a lot of your problems in home care there that people would be assured of an hour rather than breaking that down into minutes, and there's other practical things that could be do, could be done uh, in in the meantime. I just wonder how much did it cost to devise the whole sale uh, system? You know, even in terms of branding and logos and all that. Do you have a figure again for that in what the the, the cost of it was? And then finally, I just want to, 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 to ask you around the training and education, because I think this is key to our long-term tackling of all of this. And there are some models of good practice elsewhere. So what, what, what plans and what relationship do you have with the Department of Education? Because what I see is that there are people I know would make fantastic uh, doctors um, young people within the system who cannot get the points that are required and cannot get through the quagmire of barriers that are there uh, for them within the education system. <clears throat> I just, uh, I would like to see some movement. I think we absolutely need to see some movement on that and that there could be a relationship there where even in funding and providing funding models where that the, 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 per, the young person could come back and that they would be compelled then to work within the Irish system for X number of years and, and all of that. But I think until we tackle that, we will continue to have programs. We, we will continue to have problems because in all of this, I am conscious of the challenges around uh, recruitment of, of clinicians uh, right across the board. So there's just a few things there that I'd appreciate if you'd answer. Thank Senator, you. thank Sorry, you. Sorry, Minister. Uh, Minister. Uh, Walsh. Yeah, sorry, it, it's sorry. just back to yeah. my question and because um, our now Taoiseach Leo Bradker was Minister for Health in 2014 and I suppose the question that I asked you in terms of did you authorise the, the non-compliance thing, it was him. So did he authorise the, sure. the, the, the non-collection of the non-compliance, if you like, or the, to stop the collection of the non-compliance? Yeah, I wasn't avoiding your question, sorry. I was Thank just, you. I was just Thanks. still on Deputy Shortall's questions and Deputy Collins' questions, but uh, Senator Conway Welsh. Um, I, I obviously didn't, I wasn't in a position to the Taoiseach, no, my understanding is that it was when functions were delegated to the hospital groups that the hospital group had responsibility, but my Secretary General informs me that it wouldn't have been a decision made by the Minister of the day. He wasn't informed of it at all. I think something as serious that, as that needs to be, no, it, it needs to be questioned, and I don't think it's funny at all because I think there's a huge, um, no, no one is, no one. I, I, th I really think that there's a huge wastage of money in this, and people have, people have, you know, they've had their treatments delayed, and we, we outlined the figure earlier no, on, no, no. who hadn't been seen because of this. And for the current Minister for Health at the time, not to be informed of such a decision, and I, I'm bamboozled by how you might fight this in a, in, a, in a court, in a legal situation, when you don't have the data there as it is now since 2014? I didn't say, just in the no. world in which we live in, I, I didn't say that the current Taoiseach, former Minister for Health, had or hadn't been informed, uh, because I'm not, the, I'm not that person. What I, yeah. what, I, what I have said is that, the, that it wouldn't have been a decision made by the Minister of the day, it was an operational decision made by the HSE. That's all the information that I have to hand, and I just confirmed that piece of information with my Secretary General. In terms of what people know and didn't know at times, is I can only answer in relation to myself, but um, that, that's, my, that's my understanding. Um, you asked about the sale to costs. We, we'll find that out, but I would make the point. I mean, I think, I think the group structures um, are delivering benefits, um, by the way. I really do. I think if you look at 
If you take the RCSI hospital group as an example, if you look at how the different levels of hospital, Beaumont and Drogheda and Cavan are working together or pooling their patients in terms of waiting lists or driving down times, if you look at the synergies being created between Roscommon and Galway, um, but in relation to the cost, of, I'll, I'll, I'll arrange for that information to be provided to you by the HSE, but I wouldn't have it to hand, obviously. Maybe the Secretary-General could answer why, or, or give it in, in maybe an idea of, of why the collection of the data was stopped in 2014. So I joined the department in the second half of 2014. Um, Minister Bradker was appointed that summer. Um, my understanding, and, and this is not based on direct personal uh, information, my understanding is the HSE took that decision within the HSC in the context of the introduction of hospital groups and hospital group CEOs, that that responsibility, rather than staying at national level, would be delegated to the group CEOs, and it was an operational decision made in the HSC. There was no legislative or policy decision made in the department on that. I don't have any more information as to who knew what at the time. And, I mean, you, and you will obviously, I think, accept that the, the likely direction of travel um, of Slaunchy Care and indeed in advance of Slaunchy Care is that we're going to see more functions devolved from the national to the regional, um, which I personally think is an appropriate thing to do. But I mean, we have hospital group CEOs, we have hospital board chairs, we have, as Deputy Shortall points out, uh, hospital and hospital group clinical directors. And we have the HSE informing me today um, that they'll meet my expectation that there will be formal investigations into each of these. So I think, I think we need to let that let that take place. Um, I think it's very important that these issues are formally investigated. The responsibilities are being delegated to regional level and we see here in something as serious as this isn't then being carried out. I think it would question. You're making it I'm, I'm, I'm just. Mm. I'm obviously, deputy. The, sorry, senator. This is happening yeah, to you a lot right. today. <laughs> obviously, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> senator. <laughs> obviously, senator. There, there clearly have been looking at the program last night. There have clearly been cases whereby this was not carried out correctly. That's that's obvious to anybody who watched the program. I want them formally investigated. It's a jump to suggest mm. that no hospital group CEO or no hospital manager or no clinical director is managing this. And I think the the job of work that needs to be done is to identify where it's not happening, why not, make sure it doesn't happen again. And I think the point about data is very important. It's part of the reason why I want to talk about robust monitoring. I want it to be provided because we do need to have the exact data as to what is actually happening out there. And I don't, I don't, feel, I don't feel that we have adequate data to date. You see, somebody somewhere made that decision and I think they need to be held to account for it. That's it. Thank you very much. Uh, Deputy Short